wanted to share with you an exciting way of augmenting the human auditory perception with artificial intelligence, something we're calling target speech hearing. Now, you may have noticed that voices that are familiar to you, such as, I don't know, say the voices of uh, a close friend or a parent, are often easier to understand in, quiet, in crowded environments compared to uh, the speech from someone you just met for the first time, for example. And that's because the human brain is really good at focusing um, at the speech from a specific person, given prior knowledge of how they sound like. And inspired by this, we ask the following question. Can we create intelligent hearables that can achieve target speech hearing. And that means ignoring all the noise, ignoring all speech, except the speech from our target speaker. Because if we can do this, then we can enable a bunch of interesting applications. For example, imagine yourself as a tourist, listening closely to your tour guide's narration as you admire one of the world's most ancient sites. But to your contempt, their voice is drowned out by the speech from people around you. Wouldn't it be great if you had a pair of headphones that can learn how your tour guide sounds like and can drown out the speech or tune out the speech from nearby speakers so you can hear your tour guide more clearly? Alternatively, imagine yourself walking and talking with a friend along a busy street. What if your headphones could learn how your friend sounds like and can suppress the road noise, the speech from nearby uh, people, and can uh, let your friend be, the, be more uh, prominent. Well, modern day headphones can't do these things. And that's for two challenges. Firstly, we need a way for the wearer to actually select which speaker they want to hear. And second, we need a way for the headphones to learn how the speaker sounds like and extract them in the presence of other speech. And so one solution for that is to go and record uh, a bunch of audio examples of the target speaker, and then train a neural network to extract their voice in the presence of other speakers. That's just not super practical. You need a data set for each and every individual. And if that person happens to have a cold or something, then their voice characters exchange, and it wouldn't generalize very well. And so it's not a very good solution. We need a better solution. So our solution is as follows. Imagine there are two people walking along a busy street. There's a bus nearby. There could be some speakers around them. And the person on the left, who was me uh, in, during this uh, picture, um, is trying to listen to their friend uh, as they speak. So if they use our system, then they just need to look at their target speaker for a few seconds, uh, press a button on their uh, headphones, and look at their uh, target speaker uh, for a few seconds. During this time, they capture a noisy binaural example of their voice. And they use that to compute a speaker representation, a representation of their speech, uh, even in the presence of noisy uh, or noise and other speakers. And uh, this is what we're calling the enrollment stage. And once we have that done, the user doesn't need to look at the speaker anymore. They can just use that voice characteristic to extract their spe the target speech um, in, in the future. And so in this work, we make two contributions. The first is a target speech hearing system, a system that can do target speech hearing on embedded, uh, embedded headsets. And second, we run extensive benchmarking in various scenarios to showcase generalization to the real world in terms of multipath, wearers, and mobility. To see things in action, we have the following video. Hey, uh, you're wearing the target speech hearing system. You can flip the button on the right and then look at me for a few seconds. Now when you're looking at me, the system would register my voice and enroll it. Uh, now you can uh, take a walk. So now the system has uh, an enrollment of my voice, it can extract, it can focus on only my voice while ignoring all the interfering sounds uh, in the back. So in this paper, so we introduced this, this uh, system uh, called so Look One Studio, kind of where the, uh, we uh, like suppose we're in a scenario like this, where you're trying to hear my voice um, when someone else is trying to speak, then you can just look at my, you can look at me for a few seconds, get some uh, noisy example of my voice, and then you can separate out or filter out my voice only from everybody else's. 
So now that we've seen the system in action, let's talk about some of the technical challenges here. First up is noisy enrollment. And a small aside here, if you have a um, an audio recording of someone, then you can use a neural network to get the, a speaker representation or a speaker embedding, which is just a vector that uh, can, encompasses their voice characteristics. But if that recording was, you know, contained multiple speakers, then the neural network doesn't know who to focus on. And so you end up with this weird amalgamation of all speakers, which we can't really use. And so how do we fix this? Uh, and the trick here is to use binaural headphones. When we use binaural headphones, then um, if the, when the user is looking at a specific person, for example, the person here in blue, um, then their speech or their mouth is equidistant from both microphones. And so their voice arrives at one microphone and the, uh, at both microphones simultaneously. Compare that with the red speaker, their voice will arrive at one microphone before the other. And so we have a way to distinguish between speakers based on where the user is looking at. And so really, we just pass in the left and the right channels to the neural network and extract the target speaker embedding for the speaker that the user is looking at. And of course, we train this with some tolerance in where the in the angle that the user is looking at. So here you can see that even if the enrollment, the error in the enrollment angle is up to 18 degrees, the system can still function properly. So the user doesn't need to look precisely at the target, just even if they have some error, the system can still function properly. Next up is real-time uh, target speech hearing. So typically with audio uh, augmented audio applications, such as these ones, you want the audio latency to be less than 20 milliseconds. And this is so that the audio and visual senses are synchronized. And so the way we do this is we process audio in small chunks of eight milliseconds, and we uh, design the network to be efficient by caching um, intermediate computations and reuse them for future chunks. And finally, we optimize the network for deployment on an Onyx runtime inference engine. And overall, uh, with all these optimizations, we obtain a network that can process eight milliseconds of audio with just 6.2 milliseconds on embedded system, in this case, an Orange Pi 5. Then we integrate the system with noise canceling headphones. Um, so here, the person wants to listen to the speaker in blue, but there's a speaker in red here who's uh, interfering. So we can turn on noise canceling headphones, and both sounds are suppressed. But uh, we have a speaker embedding of a blue speaker here. We can capture audio from both uh, from both ears and process it using a neural network to pick out just the blue speaker, and we play that back through the headphones. And in this way, we've achieved target speech sharing. Finally, we move on to real-world generalization, and. Uh, with real-world generalization, we want to uh, we want the system to work with different waiters, different indoor and outdoor environments, as well as both uh, speaker and waiter mobility. And the way we do this is we actually just train across all of these distributions. So we, we train with 63 different room and user configurations. We train with 31 different anechoic and 32 reverberant rooms. And we also incorporate uh, different kinds of waiter and um, speaker mobility in our training set. So what does this mean? What do we get out of this? So you can see here, if we don't actually train with any waiter mobility, that uh, the system just fails outright. Any kind of motion will break the system. And so if we train with mobility, we can see that we achieve much higher speech quality improvement uh, over a large range of target angular velocities. We then move to the real world and collect in the wild recordings with uh, incorporating different um, waiter and uh, speaker motion different in different indoor and outdoor environments uh, with different waiter postures. And we show that, uh, or we recruit 21 participants who spend a total of 315 minutes rating the quality of our, out of our target speech sharing output. And we show that the mean, mean opinion score can be improved from 2.1 to 3.4 compared to the original unprocessed input, which is a significant improvement. Now, taking a step back, this project is part of our bigger vision of augmenting the human auditory perception with AI. And we believe AI will become more ubiquitous on hearables in the future. In this work, we focus on target speech hearing on noise canceling headphones but we're currently working on shrinking this down to the size of uh, hearing aids, which would be both impactful and very beneficial. 
With that, we've come to the end of my talk. Thank you all so much for listening.